Behold, the Nasdaq Composite, a graphic representation of over 3,000 companies, primarily in the tech and biotech sectors, flaunting their prowess in the stock market. Picture it as a colossal scoreboard broadcasting the performance of these companies. You needn't be an economist or a PhD holder to perceive the looming specter of what could potentially be the grandest bubble in history. Should it burst, the ensuing crash might echo through the annals of financial calamity. Reflecting on past market bubbles, what was once deemed a significant peak now seems almost comically minuscule compared to the dizzying heights the Nasdaq Composite has scaled. Even the most hapless investor who recklessly plunged their funds at the index's zenith would find themselves sitting on a modest gain of approximately 246%. Yet, this paltry increase pales in comparison to the mind-boggling 1300% surge from its lows in September 2002. Such exponential growth tiptoes perilously close to the realm of the absurd, prompting a sobering contemplation of the bubble we may currently be inflating. This isn't just growth, mind you, it's an unprecedented explosion with valuations that defy the fundamental underpinnings of the represented companies. The sheer magnitude of the surge mirrors the most extreme moments of previous financial bubbles, albeit with figures that dwarf those earlier peaks. This suggests that we're not merely witnessing a bubble, we're teetering on the brink of a potential financial cataclysm. The alarm bells should be ringing loud and clear. History cautions us that what a sense with such reckless velocity can come crashing down just as swiftly, leaving desolation in its wake. Investors, intoxicated by a heady cocktail of innovation, hope, and speculative frenzy, may find themselves precariously perched should this bubble burst. Compounding the issue is the market's current trajectory, predominantly driven by a select few stocks. Market concentration has soared to unprecedented levels, with the top 10% of stocks commanding nearly 75% of the market's total value. This level of concentration hasn't been witnessed since the Great Depression, marking today's stock market as the most concentrated in nearly a century. To put it in context, during the dot-com bubble of 2001, the top 10% of stocks accounted for roughly 72% of market concentration. Prior to the 2008 financial crisis, this figure averaged around 66%. Typically, the top 10% of stocks represent about 64% of the entire market, but we find ourselves far beyond the realm of normalcy. Surpassing even the levels seen just before the Great Depression, this raises a pressing question. Are we on the precipice of a colossal market crash? This scenario serves as a stark reminder of the perils associated with soaring levels of market concentration. When such a significant portion of the market's value is tied to just a handful of stocks, it leaves the entire system susceptible to sudden shifts in the fortunes of those stocks. The term Magnificent Seven is gaining traction today, referring to a formidable group of tech titans including Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Alphabet, Tesla, and Meta. Their combined market value is so immense that if they were their own stock market, they would rank as the second largest in the world. These companies stand at the forefront of the market's remarkable performance this year, capturing the attention of investors worldwide. However, it's worth noting a curious trend. Corporate insiders within these companies have been selling their shares despite the remarkable returns their stocks have generated. This activity raises eyebrows, especially considering the extraordinary gains these companies have achieved. A chart by financial analyst Charlie Bellow highlights the significant disparity in performance. Since the beginning of last year, while the S&P 500 index, representing a broad spectrum of the U.S. stock market, has seen a healthy increase of 32% in market value, the Magnificent Seven has outpaced the broader market with a staggering 92% return. This divergence underscores the outsized influence these tech behemoths exert on the overall market performance. Their success stories have been a major driving force behind this year's market gains. However, the phenomenon of insider selling introduces a layer of complexity prompting questions about the sustainability of these high returns. Does it reflect underlying economic realities or merely the result of speculative fervor? The stark difference in performance between the broader market and the select few companies further highlights the concentration risk within today's stock market. 
It illustrates how the fortunes of a handful of companies can overshadow the broader economic landscape, making the market increasingly sensitive to their trajectories. No matter how it goes for the seven, the market moves and cycles. The tech-heavy Nasdaq, after being in the red for all four quarters for the first time ever in 2022, is now hitting all-time highs. Zooming out prompts the important question. How high can the Magnificent Seven climb? Investors must ask themselves whether parts of their portfolios are set up to survive or if it all comes crashing down. Because chances are we won't see another NVIDIA, Amazon or Apple. But diversifying a portion of investments with high-value, low-correlation assets like fine art, as discovered by UBS, can provide resilience. Almost 4 out of 10 collectors worth over $30 million invest nearly 30% of their wealth into art like this. But it's not just billionaire corporate executives diversifying with legendary art offerings anymore because you can do it without investing millions and from the comfort of your own home. Even if we look at someone like Buffett, you can get the same feeling from his actions. Buffett popularized something called the Buffett Indicator, famously saying that it was probably the best single measure of where valuations stand at any given moment. The Buffett Indicator is simple. It's a financial metric used to gauge the valuation of the stock market relative to the size of the economy. It's calculated by dividing the total market cap of publicly traded stocks in a country by the country's GDP. When the ratio is high, it suggests that the stock market is overvalued compared to the economic output, indicating that the stock market might be expensive. This scenario is often interpreted as the market being too hot, suggesting caution for investors as it may signal a bubble or overenthusiastic investment behavior. Conversely, a low ratio implies that the market is undervalued relative to the GDP indicating that stocks might be cheap and potentially a good buying opportunity as the market could be considered too cold. Essentially, it's a method of gauging the market's temperature to discern whether it's overheated, undervalued, or reasonably priced. Currently, the indicator is creeping up once again, transitioning from the portion labeled overvalued to strongly overvalued, more than two standard deviations away from normal. Even if you don't subscribe to this model, you can always look at Warren's recent decision-making to understand his sentiments about this volatile market. Consider this. If Warren Buffett saw genuine bargains in the market, it's unlikely he would allow Berkshire Hathaway's cash reserves to swell to a record-breaking $68 billion. A closer examination of the latest SEC filings reveals that the Oracle of Omaha strategically reduced stakes in three long-lasting investments during the fourth quarter, including an Apple, HP, and Paramount Global. Notably, he downsized his Apple holdings by nearly 10 million shares, equating to a reduction of almost $2 billion. Equally significant was his decision to nearly exit his investment in D.R. Horton, a move that caught many off guard. Buffett's investment in the home builder last year surprised many who deemed the market overvalued and on the brink of collapse. Despite Buffett's reputation for a long-term investment approach, he didn't maintain his position in D.R. Horton for long, like securing substantial profits upon exit. Apart from increasing his stakes in the energy sector and substantially boosting his investment in Sirius XM, Buffett refrained from exploring new ventures. This pattern of selling, coupled with targeted buying in oil stocks and the strategic withdrawal of the housing concentration sector, raises questions about his outlook on the market's short-term prospects. The decision to sit on a cash pile of $168 billion suggests a cautious stance, possibly indicating skepticism about the market's immediate future. Buffett's actions hint at a belief that the market may not offer the kind of value he seeks, reinforcing the notion that he might be bracing for less favorable conditions ahead. Now, shifting focus to the centerpiece of this bumble talk, NVIDIA. Since October 14, 2022, NVIDIA stock has surged by over 660%. Looking at a chart, it's essentially been on a continuous upward trajectory. The company now ranks as the third largest in the world by market cap, only behind Microsoft and Apple. With the way its earnings report went last time, there are many who believe it will continue to soar from here. 
And there you have it, folks, a deep dive into the current state of the market, the risks of high concentration, and insights into Warren Buffett's recent moves, all topped off with a closer look at NVIDIA's soaring success. If you found this video insightful, then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content just like this. Hit that notification bell to stay updated whenever we post new videos. If you really enjoyed what you saw and want to support our channel even further, consider giving us a super thanks. Your support means the world to us and helps us continue creating valuable content just for you. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next one.